You are tuning into the Goldilocks Productions presentation of the Spiritual Insight Show with Reverend Tiffany White Sage Woman. Welcome to the Spiritual Insight Show. I'm Reverend Tiffany White Sage Woman. Welcome everyone that has found the show and is sitting in Sacred Circle with us. So thank you for letting me know I'm on. Yay! <laughs> Sound check. <laughs> But all right, so thank you, everyone. I need that that feedback uh, just to make sure. All right, so I would just give everyone a few moments to come in, and uh, and yay! So welcome, everyone. Okay, good. So, whoo! My goodness, it's um, the studio has, is upgraded and changed, so it's you know keeping up with everything. <laughs> so welcome, Chris. And Robin and Teresa. Oh, yeah, there we go. Good evening, everyone. Yay. Okay. Uh, oh, hello, Linnell. Thank you so much for joining in. Yes. Yes. Good evening, everyone, and happy Sunday. And hello, Robin. Yay. And so thank you. Oh, hello, Julia. I'm just so glad that everyone has joined into the, our sacred circle this evening. And uh, we're happy that you're here too, Linnell. Thank you so much for joining in. So, wow. It just, um, I know I didn't have a show last week. It was kind of, whoo, one of those um, family emergencies. So that's something that had to be taken care of. And so we had gotten word that uh, my my stepmother, the, uh, my mother-in-law, you know, my, my husband's stepmother, this is the woman that raised him from, from three to when you joined the Navy, 21, when he was 21. So it, you know, it was, um, we didn't have a very easy relationship, um, with her all over the years, but you know what we tried and did the best that we could. And she had been sick for several years. And then we had gotten word that she did cross over. So there's a lot of emotions like that that go with that, especially when someone has been ill um, for so long, you're glad that they're not in pain anymore. You're glad that there is relief, right? Um, and and especially she had a very aggressive Parkinson's um, disease. So her mind was, she was smart as a whip, very, you know, but could you imagine your body is not keeping up with you? trapped in your own body so that's terror is devastating you know a prisoner in your own body type of thing so I'm glad she's at peace i've had conversations with her from the other side and so it's um it's all good it's just you know we have to watch that grieving is definitely for us that that i want to say left behind but we're, we're not being left behind anymore so pay attention to this how many now of you are do you, do you realize that a lot of us, well, not a lot of us, we are in the fourth dimensional energies. So we are on the same level that is referred to as heaven. Okay. We are on the same level that is referred to as heaven, the fourth dimension. So all of you pay attention. I know everyone in this circle, this sacred circle this evening are very intuitive, um, have very much embraced their divine abilities. So we're going to hear sharper. Everything's going to be so much clearer now, uh, whether it's hearing, seeing, feeling, or knowing, recognizing when spirit is around, all right? Um, because we're on the same dimension. Now, fourth dimension is a very big dimension. Like, so in the beginning parts of it, and then, you know, so much more. And so the fourth dimension is where we call the heaven, the first, that first part of it where people cross over. And if they're in shock because they forgot what it's like to be outside of the, the third dimension, maybe they never meditated. They didn't know what, they, what their belief system was or anything like that. Okay. It's a shock to them and they need healing. So they would go into healing. All right. Um, she would have to um, definitely 
um, uh, you, you know, have some sort of healing that I, I could like they're wrapped in healing blankets. The angels are all around them singing to them, singing their soul tone and sound back to them to remind them who they are, their divinity. And then the upper parts of the, the fourth dimension, 4D, is our schooling, is training, advanced learning. Um, those that want to still stay in this universe, but continue their education in the fourth dimension and higher. Okay. All right. So if, if I'm frozen on something, I think some people said that they're frozen, frozen, um, is just reset, you know, like reboost or reset your page. Try resetting the Facebook page. Okay. All right. There you go. Yeah. Yay. All right. <laughs> So anyway, so it's very interesting. Remember, we've talked about this before, where, where it was asked that um, where does what's going to happen? We know that the third dimension is imploding and is, is disappearing because it, it, there's no room for it in this ascension process. Lady Gaia, Mother Earth is already in 5D. All right. The blueprint for her has already been reactivated. This is her blueprint, her divine blueprint. And it's going slow because just to suddenly do it, we are already seeing the earth shake, tremor, move. We're seeing some things happen. This is all part of her ascension process and we're all feeling it with her. Now we're all safe, all right, in the upper dimensions and upper vibrations, okay? And so, uh, oh, we got more people coming. Hello, Wendy. Hello, and hello, Sarah. Yeah, you've got real bad storms over there. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> well, if you can't listen to the whole live show, then you can be sure to tune in. Um, okay, so uh, tune in later. But I know you love the live shows. I love that you're here, too. All right. So so back to that. So it's... Um, Yes, the sunrise and sunset, Linnell, a lot of people have noticed that the sun is different because Helios, the grand central sun, which isn't like a physical sun, it's this, it's this beautiful energy used to stream through the sun, use the sun as a sieve, <laughs> to, for us to get our uploads and downloads from the sun, grand, the great central sun. But now Helios is directly to us, streaming right through us, not going through the sun anymore, our solar system sun. Exactly. So it is glowing extra bright. Some people say it's even white. It's whiter than it used to be. And so it's, uh, it's all good stuff. Just don't fear it. And it's the best time is that morning light. Get in there. Get, get outside at least for 15 minutes. Don't use sunblock in the morning time to go out there just because you know what? Let me tell you, you want to make sure that whatever you're putting on your skin isn't chemicals. It's the chemicals that hurt your skin, not the UVA. The UVA that comes from the sun and from the great central sun, man cannot copy, man cannot create. All right? So it's not going to harm us. And our mitochondria, our cells need it. Just like every other living being on this planet needs it, right? Take a plant out of the sun and what happens to it? Of course it's going to get sick. Anyway, enough about that. <laughs> so a lot of, we're already into the fourth, fourth dimension. So a, I know everyone in the sacred circle are. So what we're doing is we're like one foot in, one foot out. That's how it feels. We can still see and associate with people. And the third dimension, you can see the people that that don't want to wake up, are slow to wake up. And we still, especially in a meditation or when we find that moment, we can rise very quickly and easier now too. It's almost like we're all a walking and a waking meditation. It's you can do this anytime because when you have made it a habit of, of incorporating it into your daily life, guess what happens? It's very easy. Um, just to, all it is, is just that shift that occurs. And do you know what that is? It's that the third eye references a balanced left and right hemisphere left of the brain. We hear we have 
a masculine aspect and a feminine aspect. So, of course, the left hemisphere, right-handed, is man, is male. All right? And the right mind with the left hand is the feminine. So, I've taught people before is just to always just this little meditation or just this little affirmation of the bridge is solid between my left and right brain or any kind of affirmation that unifies your brain to say that my brain is in perfect harmony and in balance. It is one. Your mind is one. <gasps> well, we hear this, you know, just it keeps expanding. Now, outside of us, this oneness with our brain, the oneness with each other, the oneness throughout the universe. Aha! Does that make sense? Absolutely total sense. And so those that have a really strong third eye have learned to balance. Be balanced up here. Not let that loud mouth, you, you know, left-handed, male-dominant brain keep screaming at us. All right? So it's that harmonious balance. So a lot of us are still seeing both. You can, we're still, we can still see the three, of course, we're still living part of that in the, the third dimension, the way that, that our society set up, but watch how these certain structures and, and are starting to, to crumble. They really are. And that more and more we're starting to, to lean on each other and to look at the examples around you. How many more things are, are, you can tell when people, situations, companies, whatever, that everyone's raising their vibrations. You can feel it. Things are changing. Times are changing. People are stepping into their own powers now, which is we are divine, powerful beings. All right. And it's not a, a, a 3D power. That's a very selfish all right. Stepping up into our power in the, the fourth dimension and higher is, is recognizing that we all are very important. There's enough for all. We are abundant in all areas of our lives and being supportive of each other. All right. That sharing. There it is. All right. So, yes, the last week and when you find that out that and again, a lot of loved ones. And just people, whether they're celebrities, you hear people in the news, I and mean, a lot of people are, are crossing over, and it's oh okay. And then how do you? How does that make you feel? And change can be very scary, knowing that everything is is changing and shifting, and it, it's going to be good, but we're not there yet, and we still have some more of the birthing pains <laughs> that we have to go through. All right. Um, and so that's what the ascension feels like. It's just we're going going through through this uh, birthing process because it's all part of life every day. Death, birth, death, rebirth, death. Right. So yes, Chris, thank you. Manifesting is happening quicker and quicker. Absolutely, it is. Yes, it is. Very quick, very fast. Thanks for sharing that, Chris. Yes. So remember, I had asked, um, I was getting some insight, and then it was kind of like, let me sit with it for a minute and see um, what's going to happen to those that absolutely refuse to ascend, doesn't want to be a part of it, wants to stay in the third dimension, what happens to these beings. We know a lot of them are, are dying off, but what happens if they're in the fourth dimension, if they're in the heaven, all right, that holding area, so to speak, what happens um, or like the, the crossing over that whole transition area. Think of like Grand Central Station, the transportation and hospital center all in one. That's what it's like energetically. I don't know how to describe it any other way. All right. And then the upper vibe, the upper vibration of the fourth dimension is the schooling from all sorts of different, all the stargates that come into this universe all right, um, are there so you can get teachings from any of the stargates, all right? And so it's uh, uh, very, very powerful. Now, so those that just refuse to cross over don't want to um, ascend, what's going to happen to them? 
And I had first heard that they were going to go to another 3D planet, but but then there was like, hold on, there's more on that. So I was like, oh, is it still being tweaked? And of course, because we have gotten past 2012 and we are writing a new, how do I say history? Everything, everything that we do for from 2012 going forward, all right? It is is creating a whole new reality. All these steps to a golden age. I don't say back to a golden age because this golden age is sweeter and better. Because you know we 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 fell from a golden age a couple of times and then had to work our way back up. The sweet thing is that we worked our way back up on our own. Now, of course, we always have divine the angels and our guides and, and the light beings who are there for us to help us, but no one could swoop in and do something for us. All right. That, that also too goes against our free will. So when we show that we're tired of this, we don't want this. We're tired of living off balance. Let's go for it. We, we've already surpassed that. So now as we're getting higher, and they're coming down more to us, meet us halfway. Bam, things are just magic. Magical. That's all I can think of. It's magic. That's where the magic is. All right. Yay. That's where we are. Isn't that beautiful? Woohoo. <laughs> so, uh, oh, let me see. Mm, now, today was full of few birth waves. Yes. Yes. We're going to feel them like our energy. We can just feel them just vibrate through us. Uh, Julia, my stepdad passed in June. Yeah, you know, it can take you. There's there's no length of time for grieving. Everyone's different. All right. And so, but I'm finding that it's always, as we are growing and expanding, uh, we, we are grieving less. All right. Allow the grieving to happen. But if you find that I'm happy for them and it's okay and it's easier when we know someone that suffered, right? But how about someone that was just, and, and if they're young, we, we still have a hard time with that, don't we? If it's someone who, you know, has had a good life, is 15 above, then it's like, oh, okay. But if it's, if it's younger people, then I think then we have a hard time with that, uh, most definitely. Um, especially if it's a child or, or if it's just any, any youth, because it's like, oh, oh my goodness, you know, so young, but that's, you know, they, they probably lived more in that lifetime than we have. Okay. So let me just use an example. Like if someone's like 15, they, they die, they cross over young, they die, they transform when they're 15. In those 15 years, they've taught, they've done more than most people have done in a whole lifetime. Does that make sense? They come in, they're very powerful teachers, and they're not meant to be here for a very long time. They're meant to help um, those around them ascend. So, so there you go. And, and we're learning that, is that we look at the physical bodies and the, and the steps of the physical bodies but sometimes we don't address the soul because your child can be more of an advanced soul than you are. Or you see how that works? It's, it's energetically. It's not, we're so used to on how someone looks, right? And so, uh, oh, absolutely. We, we're still human and have human emotions. There's nothing wrong with the emotions. We were given them for a reason. It's just keeping them in balance and in check, right? And not to go to to extremes with them uh, absolutely chris and this is what's beautiful is because we're ascending um in this human form and so this is new um and uh we could we could uh, it's hard to explain them. they're gonna have to articulate it for me a little bit better way because I, I feel the energy shape and, and, and shift and it's we'll get back to that. But the point um, was, was that I finally got the answer to wondering what's going to happen to people with the 3D 
in the third dimension that did not want to um, ascend. So here it is. For those in this universe that come from this universe, that are born in this universe, um, they're from this universe, no matter how many planets this universe has had, all right, and we've lived on those planets in past lives. If you're from this universe, you will go to the fourth dimension, to the schooling, back to the training. And that's where you will evolve after, of course, the, the healing part. Um, and everything is, again, all free will. So you have to make choices. And once you, yes, I want to want to continue on. I want to do this. They have to go to the schooling. So in the schooling and training process, then they have to, again, now do you want to rejoin the 5D Earth? Yes, then they do. But by the time they come back and by the time we're there, it's just going to be so, oh, it's not going to be like, wow, <laughs> you know, so dramatic. It's just going to be so subtle and so smooth that it's like, oh, hey, how you doing? You know, now, those that aren't from this universe that wanted to experience Earth, experience another 3D planet so that they could ascend faster, <laughs> but they didn't and they don't want to, those are the ones that are going to another 3D planet in another universe, whether it's in their own universe or just in another universe, but they're, they're coming out of here. So I hope that that makes sense. All right. So it's, it's pretty, pretty cool. It's pretty fascinating. The information that was coming through. Okay. Ooh. All right. Let me, Robin, I recently had some Reiki done. It was, it was something I am learning. Each time my head was on fire, now I'm constantly vibrating and feeling electric. Yes. Yes. You know what, though, Robin? That's a normal side effect <laughs> of, uh, of Reiki when you're opening up. You're realizing how to feel the energies work through you. And it almost feels like you're electrified, right? Yes, you're on fire. You're electrical, and but you're paying attention now to these healing energies and how we can direct them. And so make sure, Robin, that, that you remember your conduit. If our energies get stuck in our body, we get really, when we're closed off, all right, and we're just in our energy, we get like we're on fire because it's so much within us, and it's like, ooh. I got to do a healing or I got to release it. So you can send distant healing when you feel that way. The thing, though, is to open up as a conduit. I'm a conduit. Let the energy flow from hollow earth way down. Make sure the grounded into hollow earth and Seraph Serapis Bay. Say hi to Serapis Bay. We're down in hollow earth. Hey, how you doing, Serapis? <laughs> Thanks for getting our back and our feet and our groundings. All right. So we are connecting down to Hollow Earth where Seraphis Bay is with his beautiful, huge healing pyramid that all of us are rooted into, grounded into, ground, ground, open it up all the way up into the galaxies, into, the, into our solar system and beyond. And when you do that, it's like a starburst. It's so powerful. That's you're shooting this healing love and light in all directions. Now you're healing everyone. You're not just having this one-on-one -on -one session with somebody. You are sending that love and light in all directions. So powerful. Right? Woohoo! Interesting. So yeah, I know, I know Robin Ground. She she's good with grounding. Um, yeah, enjoy these tingles. There's a lot of validation I find. You get goosebumps in the tingles and like that shiver. It's you get in the validation. It's like, whoo, that's awesome. So that's a quote I recently heard from someone that so resonates with me. What quote, Tay Resa? I think I went so fast. <laughs> listen wider yes yes yeah okay awesome all right listen wider there you go i love that exactly expansion wider Whew. throw it all out there 
again, you have to be experienced with energy. You want to be careful just for someone. Hey, I want to try this. You want to make sure you're grounded. You want to make sure that only those beings that uh, your guardian angel, of course, is always with you. It's your angelic realm. Uh, and those for your highest and greatest, your angelic committee, which has your guides and everybody, all multidimensional beings is who's on your, I call them my angelic committee. All right. So you have guides who had a, a life on this earth plane. You have beings that haven't. You have the angels. So I just say angelic committee, but it's all these multi dimensional and even interdimensional intergalactic beings that are helping you only those for your highest and greatest and when you do that whoo you will talk about tingles if you know you want to make sure that that is a great grounding and protection and then go shine that light all right and so uh, because you don't want to use your own energy that if you heal and feel tired afterwards, you've used your own energy, okay? To tell how you're really open up is when you feel even more energized and, and even more charged after healing. Now, it's a healing to me, it's all healing, whether it's a healing session, a reading session, because healing happens with a reading, well, with a good reading, or with the way readings are meant to be, you know, <laughs> intuitive messages, all right? So then you're like, whoa, wow, I'm going to go run a marathon now. You know, you have all this energy. And so that's how you feel. But if you feel drained, then maybe you've had a busy day. And then this is why I say, you know, if you've got to postpone a healing session, a one-on-one, -on -one, because you feel drained, do it. Because what's going to end up happening, if you can't open up completely, completely, um, you're going to end up you with using your energy and then you'll feel worse. We've all done it. I've done it once or twice. And I was like, no, and then I have to honor that the healing, make sure the day slows down a bit. I've asked angels to help me with that. Let's pace it. And um, it, it's just the tweaking it. You know, how else would you know unless you experience it? Right. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Hello, Melissa, my favorite joy guide, Melissa Parks. Yay! <laughs> her show on Goldilocks Productions, her radio show is Wednesdays, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. All right. So be sure you will see it listed on the Goldilocks Productions Facebook page here and the Goldilocks Productions group page as well. So there's a Facebook page and a group page. And uh, so be sure to tune in on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern time for the lovely, wonderful Melissa Parks. Yay. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, lots of energy flowing. And so you just feel this natural high. You feel like you've ate a bunch of sugar, but you didn't. <laughs> it's a natural Hi. Woo, yes. Feel that heart space, that cosmic heart space open up. Woo. It's our cosmic heart, our sacred center, connecting with the cosmic heart, that heartbeat, that divine heartbeat. Oh, so, so beautiful. Right? Uh, Wendy, I, I always feel uh, energized and super happy. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's how the healing session sh sh you should feel. That's how you should. So, oh, Melissa, thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. But, yeah, so that's how you, you call me feeling even more energized and it's like floating. And so it's like even when I'm done with this, with this show. <laughs> now, a lot of times I, I have to go back and watch sometimes because I don't even remember what was said, some of the channeling that comes through. But I know that I'm like so high, you know, and, and it's a Sunday evening, you know, my husband's like, I want to go to bed early because it's the start of his work week. And I'm like, whoa, I am still flying. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, okay, Teresa, thank you for sharing this quote with me here. 
uh, we are spirits having a human experience. Absolutely. And we're taking this human experience and ascending. Aha. We're, we're making new quotes, Teresa. <laughs> All right. Uh, I felt different than ever before. I am glad you're here too, Linnell. Absolutely. I'm so grateful that you have joined our sacred circle. And so how about we do this for just one moment? Many of you know this, but let's, let's just grab a crystal. What we're going to do is, is make sure everyone here feels very good in this circle, the energy. But let's take it even higher and further and expanding it out. And let's make sure we are um, truly into our light. And this is the decree of the lilac fire of source. Now, those in healing know about the violet flame. The violet has, a, has ascended to the lilac. All right. All our colors, all these colors, everything 3D is, is, ascends and changes. Just like um, our seventh dimensional chakras, we can't take them in the upper vibrations. So there are 12 chakras that we're working with now, and these colors changed. If you want to see those differences, go to my website. Excuse me. <laughs> Energy is making me burp. Uh, woo! Whitesagewoman.com. Go to my website. Click under Cosmic Heart Healing, and you'll see the chart of the 12 chakras. And I, I just recently updated with, with the ascended colors. So you can see, compare, you know what the seven main chakra colors are. There's chakra jewelry everywhere. And now we'll see within the next several months if uh, new chakra jewelry, 12 chakra, different colors. All right. See how that feels with you. Sit and, and vibrate with that. Now that chart too is also part of uh, the online courses. If you look at online courses, it's activate your avatar course. I channeled this course in last fall. Many of you sat right here, got the hot off the press. We did live web webinars with it. Um, so this is expanding constantly too i have to already go back and and do a revision they want me to do they're telling me to go back and do some more touches to it okay so <laughs> so uh and but once you take a course with me and there's a revision i will send you those revisions all right and so those of you who took the course got the revised chart explaining to each of these 12 chakras um what the color is, what the shape is, what archangels in charge of it. It's good stuff. It really is. You don't want to talk about vibrating. Woo! Let me tell you, every time I look at that and go through the, my chakras, it just, it's, oh yeah, there we go. And the, the ear buzzing, you hear that ear buzzing? It, it's, it's the angels adjusting the frequency for you. It's us getting used to these frequencies. Um, because frequencies and dimension is different. All right. So we're tuning into these different frequencies, just like on a radio, there's different frequencies, right? So of course, yay. All right. Uh, Linnell, I love that you can be in your energy. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Linnell. Thank you. All right. Let's see. I just got a super seven stone. G wonderful. That's a great stone. All right, so everyone, get your crystals, and we're going to do this. Those who are familiar with the Lilac Fire of Source, all right? Um, this will be, oh, I know this. This is not going to be new for you, but it might be new for many of you watching, whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching this um, on the in the archives. And you can watch it as many times if you need to, to um, have this written out or um, I'll be happy to help you with that. You can private message me or email me. Uh, again, those of you, most of, I think all of you who are commenting, we are friends on Facebook, so you can send me a private message. All right. Um, so here is the decree for the Lilac Fire of Source. I want you to repeat after me. Hold your crystals in your hand. Close your eyes. Always take three deep breaths. 
And this is something too that they're, they want me to share with you is that we may feel lungs, our lungs area, that sick, uh, sacred chakra area, our lungs, our heart. Yeah, it's all right there. That we may feel sometimes like it's really hard to take a deep breath, but take it anyway. Keep doing it every day because we're going into new territory. So as our vibrations and frequencies are changing, this is our body's way of keeping up, of going, what's that? I haven't smelled that before. I haven't breathed this in before. What is that? So, I mean, sure, pay attention if there's something majorly physically wrong. But ascension flu or ascension side effects does happen. They don't last long. All right. And so just when you have a conversation with your body, your body will tell you what's going on. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Here we go. Repeat after me. I am the lilac fire of source. I am the flame of love. I am the wings of freedom. I am the song of joy. I am the heart of the new golden age. I am ready. Bathe me in your light. You can repeat this three times or I just say it is done. It is done. It is done. Three times it repeats. Again, always I like to take three deep breaths. Take some deep breaths. There we go. Yeah. Whew. Amy, I had ear buzzing yesterday. Yes. Very good. Very good. That that's confirmation for you, Amy. Okay. And I know a lot of us question it and we, we need that validation. And so it's, it's very careful. Everything in the past, remember, had to be explained to death, had to be explained or validated by science or, or doctors. And if they didn't know where else to go, well, don't start with them. That's the end result. Always, always, we get our validation in the upper vibrations. Science can't prove outside its realm. Know that. How can they experiment? How can they? So they know very little outside of 3D. And they and they won't unless we have scientists, and they are, that are ascending. Then they're like, oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I love science too. I like watching history channel, science channel, you, you know, um, the ancient alien shows, the UFOs, all those, uh, you know, that's great. I love all those. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> but it's take what you can leave and leave the rest. You know, you have that internal knowing, it's all there within us. Yes, this is good. And then sometimes it's like, oh, they're catching up. Science is catching up. Finally, finally. Yay. And have you noticed, if you've watched Ancient Aliens for a very long time, they are more spiritual now. The way they did their new beginning and everything. It's all, ooh, there's a spiritual twist to this now. I love it. They're embracing it. That it's not some, you know, crazy thought, some kind of crazy hippie kind of phase. No, it's who we are divinely. All right. So, oh, I just saved all your videos, Robin. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you, dear. <laughs> you can go to, um, actually, too, for those that maybe do not know, you can um, go to go to Ox Productions on YouTube, on the YouTube channel. All right, subscribe, and then next to subscribe and share and something else, there's, there's a little bell. If you click on that bell, you get notifications 
every time a new show is uploaded. And you can see the playlist that's got all the Goldilocks production shows. Even Melissa Parks, who was just, you know, here. Um, Joyful Finding Show uh, on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. So you can catch her archive shows. You can catch all of the shows, anything that resonates towards you. Um, and I think right now the one that does actual video shows is myself and Reverend Brian Rawls. And he's on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. He's been going through some things the last several weeks, but I hope he'll be back on this week. He should. So he, the Ascension, you know, he's <laughs> he's expanding. He has a new guide he's working with. So he's just he's been in touch with me almost every day, letting me know uh, we, we share things like this. Uh, and, and so it's yeah, yeah. You, you've got to have that. You've got to have the people that understand what's going on that you can bounce things off of so you don't feel like you're just a nut job. But we're, <laughs> we're beyond all that now, right? <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, let me see. All right. Uh, check, checking up with the comments here. All right. Oh, thank you, Teresa. Thank you. Uh, I love that channel. You got the gold. Yeah. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Yay. All right, so I think we got all the contact information or just how to get in touch with uh, uh, with all the shows. For those of you maybe who didn't, who weren't aware of that. So there you go. I would love to have all the show hosts streaming live like this. But a lot of them, you know, if you're just not camera friendly, then <laughs> that's okay too. <laughs> you know, so anyway. All right. Oh, gosh, now I just feel like I've got... Uh, you feel like you got angel wings that are brushing over it's like hair over your face but you just feel the woo! i love that <laughs> oh yeah all right we're all getting that <sighs> that energy spun up and yes Linnell, i know you you love brian you watch his shows too and so uh yeah and, and yep yeah. all right oh yeah hi puppies chris you heard them they're such loud drinkers, aren't they? My goodness, the kitchen in the other end, you can hear them drink water. <laughs> I think my husband overwalked them today. They had some more walks than they usually had. And they come back from my walk like, please, no more. <laughs> They've been hanging out by the water bowl. <laughs> anyway, so it's too cute. It's like, come on, you need your exercise. Let's go, let's go. You need some fresh air. <laughs> Anyway, it's cute. We all have days like that too. And we're just like, mm -mm, I, I need a nap. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was cute. So thank you, Chris, for saying hi to the puppies. <laughs> and uh, and for those of you who maybe want to see the puppies, they're not these little small dogs that they think they are. Uh, on my Facebook page, if, if, I mean, my profile, um, I posted a picture of them yesterday. Uh, my husband and I uh, were sitting on the couch and uh, the dog in my lap is Ty. He's like my baby. Well, even though the other dog is his mother, Gracie, um, anyone sits next to me, even his mom, Gracie jumped up on the couch in between my husband and I, and Ty would have no part of that. He was like, no, you're too close to my mommy. So then he jumps in my lap and I'm like, oh my gosh. It's so cute. Anyway, I love when they do that, don't they? It's so <laughs> it's like, okay, but this is your mother. She gave birth to you. That's your mommy right there. <laughs> and how they they just want that attention. They're just such beautiful beings of unconditional love. And and it's just doesn't it just take you to that state of joy? Our pets, you know, animals and Know that when we love on our pets, send that love out to the whole animal kingdom. Since we're sending out all that love and light to all the animal kingdoms, right? Um, to every, just like how we, we put out the intention that you don't want any humans, no, no beings at all to suffer. Include that to the animal kingdom. Include that to earth. Include that to all living beings. 
may all living beings be harmonious and, and, and together. And I'm trying to avoid using, you don't want to say negative things or, or not, which you don't want, you, you know, and may all living beings be comfortable, at, you know, whatever temperature they're in, may all be comfortable, have shelter, food, and, and all of their needs provided. Um, and just that light that you put out like that, is so powerful and you don't have to see it to believe it uh, you have to believe it in order to see it huh that's the trick isn't it it's no trick that's just we've been taught the opposite so that we couldn't find our own magic so that we couldn't step into our own divine power so that we could be controlled easier and manipulated easier but no more of that. All of that 3D energy, we're like, done. <laughs> right? We're all like, yeah, no. <laughs> so, so that's very interesting and exciting. We, we are exciting times. And still, please know that we um, still have a lot of growth and expansion. And so that can, can again come across as a disaster, whether it's landforms, volcanoes that's been asleep suddenly erupt, the the um, the, the plates, the earth plates shifting underneath the water. Uh, they, I read something um, that Australia keeps drifting because of the plates underneath the ocean shift and the island shifting north. And it has been for a bit. Isn't that interesting? Uh, but it's all part of what's going on. So what, you know, other people or scientists trying to call this global warming of this, that, and the other. You know what? It's expansion, baby. That's what it is. It's mother. We are in a polar shift. Do you know that the last polar shift wiped everyone off the earth? <laughs> in phases, but it did. So that's why ascension can't happen fast. We can't handle it. So slow, slow, slow progress. And please know that as she's changing and shifting, we are too. So we are above and protected from any of the physical changes. I know our mind's kind of like, what the heck does that mean? But just feel it in your heart. Know that. And okay. Okay. We don't have to pre-see everything, you know? We don't have to see it in order, again, to believe it. When you believe it, you see it. So stay in that sacred space the within, all right, where all our answers are. And it's, uh, I love that we all connected together. You can connect with other uh people in this sacred circle and many of us have other sacred circles too it's like circles and circles and circles it looks like the flower of life if you look at that geometric shape uh, all these different circles interacting with each other but we're all have the same intention and that's living together in harmony and peace and you can't achieve harmony without balance so when I say harmony, it's balanced, right? So this is beautiful what's coming up for us. And even though, like I said, there's, you can still say that there's so much crazy stuff going on. It is, okay? It's, it's the 3D, the third dimension. People who don't want to change are going to act out. So have a temper tantrum. We see it all the time. Having the temper tantrum or doing, you know, no, I don't want to change it. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Oh, okay. We're only meant to, you know what's going to happen to you is that more and more, not that we judge, observe. Just observe. Unhook being emotionally attached to it. And, and I'm not talking about being cold hearted. All right. I'm just, I feel that like we are so attached to everything so much that it's made us so politically correct to the third degree 
that it's, how does this really affect me? It doesn't. I'm not going to get on that drama stage. I'm hooked from it. Psh, not my reality. It's not in my sacred circle. No, thank you. Bye-bye. It's not in my sacred space. Only keep things that are for your highest and greatest in your sacred space. So turn the news off. So turn off things that try to pull you back down. All right. So there you go. Unhook. Now, I've always had a problem with cord cutting. I don't, you don't cut energy. You don't destroy energy. You don't cut it. Think about amputations. You can cut the physical, but the energy's still there. That phantom pain, the energy is still there. But you've just cut the physical. So all of this, it always confused me when I would hear people say cut cords. I was like, what are you cutting? You don't cut energy. You unhook. If you want to think of that energy as a hook, like a fishing hook, you unhook that. <laughs> Little tentacles. No. You reroute and rewire. That's what happens to our brains that science has proved is that when we change and shift our thinking, uh, parts of our brain that lights up is rewired. It's a different path. The same thing with your intentions. And I making that decision, I'm not putting up with this anymore. I'm not, I'm not dealing with this new attitude, new thinking, rewire, rewire, right? Plug in, plug out. Exactly, Linnell. Yeah, yeah, Chris, not my circus, not my monkeys. Exactly. <laughs> yes, that's it. Don't participate. Don't participate. It doesn't mean that you're being blind because the people who are still blinded, oh, I don't say blind. Yeah, they're not awake. They're blinded. They don't want, they're scared to get out of the third dimension for whatever reason. And then... They look at, they do recognize that there's those of us who we are expanding and whether they get defensive, they take it personal and then start, oh, well, you're not, you know, you're blind. You don't see this. You, you're just hiding in, in, in all this foo-foo spiritual stuff. And that's not true. <laughs> don't let them push buttons like that and be like, okay. Your reality is your reality. My reality is mine. Agree to disagree and move on, right? And uh, so this is, we're going to see more and more of this. And we've already know, you know, it, it can divide families. It can divide friends. It can do so much as we shift and change. And uh, no, don't be so sad. For those that choose not to, right at the same moment. Because remember, they they have a chance. All right? They're, they're going to go back to school and in the, the schooling and training. And then whether they want to rejoin 5D later. All right? So it's, it's, up, to, it's up to them. All right? And so, yeah, there you go. What about the monkeys in your own family? Well, and, and that's Robin. I understand. Uh, we've, we've had a couple of those in ours too, and that does make it hard. And we have to to heal any guilt that we have uh, right off the bat. You know, if you don't support your family, you're da, 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 da. oh, there's the guilt switch kicking in all the guilt. No, I've done the best I could. I've done the best I can. They're not for my highest and greatest. And you were put together to learn. You just keep ascending. You just keep going. Keep shining bright. Now, in your own family, I find that the brighter you shine, it irritates the crap out of those that don't want to change. <laughs> and they fight back. Or they think that they're fighting back because you're doing something to them. You, honey, you're just standing there putting out your love and light in all directions. And if it bothers them, all it does is reflect 
their own stuff right back at them. It's not you they can't stand. They can't stand their own reflection. Know that. And they have to deal with their reflection. That's what all this ascension is about. Dealing with all our dark stuff. Healing and transforming. Release and resolve our reflections. That was then. This is now. Wow. So much weight right off the shoulders. All right. I know it sounds. Oh, it's easier said than done. I know I've been there, done that, but you know what? When you do it and stick with it, you really do get through it, and it feels so good. You really, it's like, yeah, yeah, there's no going back. <laughs> Trust me. Okay, that's it. Yeah, Robin, they do act up more when they see their own reflection. You are not responsible for anyone's actions, reactions, reflections of themselves that they see in your light. That's their free will. You're not living the life for them. Don't take responsibility in that way. All right. And families, it's hard because we do have um, some kind of responsibility to take care of your family. Wow. That's heavy. That's some heavy stuff. There's people that, oh, my family will take care of me. I'm not doing crap. What? No. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. You just have to, to, if you can't forgive, if you find you're constantly that there's a, an, 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 a, like a, victim going on a victim role and not with you but for your for, for those going on they're always going to play the victim they're going to play the blame game it's everyone else's fault it's never theirs blah blah, blah 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 again your light is mirroring back their own things that they need to work on and it reminds them of that and that's what makes them agitated it's not you they don't even really know who you are because they can't get past their own reflection remember that Remember that. All right. And you are a divine light and keep shining brightly. And if any of us, we're still all sitting here, we're all connected. Any of us needs during the week some sort of support. You know, we can message if you're friends with each other. If not, that's fine. Find each other. Friend each other. We're all here for each other. The message, private message, hey. I'm having a bad day or I'm having a bad moment. It's normal to do that. I'll tell you, you'll catch yourself more and more and more. You know what helps me? I light incense a lot, a lot. Light candles, I light incense. I mean, the little tea lights and the little votives, you know, in a votive holder is safe. Um, unless you have cats, I do have to say, <laughs> don't let them jump up where they are. But, uh, you know, it's, it's the candlelight, it's the smudging, creating that sacred space. Who is in charge of the sacred space in your home? It should be you. You should be the shaman in your home. You should be directing that energy flow. How do you want the energy to flow in your home? Hmm. If your energy is sick in your home, guess what? The inhibitants of that house is going to be sick too. And so if you, the shaman, whoever the healer of the home is, is making sure that you are programming and then maintaining that energy in your home, everyone else will have to follow suit or they'll move out. Or they won't come in. <laughs> Once they moved out, they won't come back. Ah, isn't that great? So... Of course, we all know about Archangel Michael is great for protection. All right. Uh, Archangel Sandalfin is in charge of our earth chakra, uh, the grounding. Ask Archangel Sandalfin to assign angels at, at all entry points, all doorways, and that only those and that for the whole family's highest and greatest for that sacred space. Spaces highest and greatest can come through those doors. It works. It works. It works. P 
people won't come into the house. They suddenly will make, oh, I, I can't come in. I, I just didn't want to tell you this. Okay, bye. Aha. If they step in, they'll step back out. <laughs> they won't stay long because they won't be comfortable. All right? And it works. It works. So there you go. Sometimes forgiveness is too hard. It's too much. It's like this huge mountain. You can't do it all at once. You have to do it in chunks. You have to do it a little bit at a time. And it's it's okay. But just release it. Make sure you're not holding anything bitter in inside you. We have this tool. You're going to be bitter or better. Let's make a goal every day to be better. Better with our thoughts. Better with our actions. Better with our intentions. And make it a better day, a better night, a better future. Well, a better right here, right now does make a better future. Right? We shouldn't live in the past, shouldn't live in the future. Right here, right now creates it all. All right. So we have come to the end end of this show. And thank you so much. The time just, it just feels like five minutes. Really? It's like, oh my gosh. Hey, how long have we been here? <laughs> Touching back in now. Oh, all right. Here we are. Look what time it is. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I love our time together. And thank you so much for participating in this sacred circle. And many blessings to each and every one of you. You all mean so much to me. And uh, let's just know that anytime you need that, um, that pump of love and that when we sit in the sacred circle every week, we, we just remind ourselves of, of that love of that divinity. And uh, yeah, isn't that beautiful? And you can get back to it anytime. All right. So I will be back next Sunday evening, 8 PM Eastern time. Thank you all so much. Many blessings to each and every one of you. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed the show. 